Hey guys, what's up? Him Arthur here, and welcome back to Let's Play on Mario Superstar Baseball. In the last episode, after beginning our journey with the Almighty King Bowser, decided to take on, of course, the best of the best, because, you know, really, if there's anybody's team you want to recruit, it would be, of course, the Fat Man. And, as you probably remember from last time as well, Wario and Waluigi are actually not recruitable, and that goes for, actually, all of the captains and co-captains, but we can still at least pick up everybody else. So after defeating Wario, it is now time to try to claim some members of his team. And thankfully, I did look ahead in the video. Both of the matches we'll be seeing today will recruit at least one character. So, there is good news on that front. Poor Mario, he's just, he's so tired. I mean, it is like 1.30 in the morning, but yeah, he's, he's beat. I know that feeling, dude. It's Thursday. It's just, ugh. Normally I have time off from University Tuesday, Thursday, I didn't have any time off Tuesday, I'm not going to have time off today, later today, since it's officially Thursday now. He, he's just exhausted, he's ready for the week to be over. Close, but no cigar. I think we talked about this last time, but the Power Bat can definitely help the Bowser team. Probably more so than a lot of other teams. Mostly because there's a lot of characters. Bowser, uh, all the Hammer Bros, maybe even Bowser Jr. can not quite get it over the fence sometimes, but with the Power Bat it makes it much easier to do so. Granted, that also went straight up the middle, so that's the hardest spot to get because that's the furthest wall from where you're hitting, but still. My man Waluigi, on the other hand, he knows what he's doing. Hammer Bro apparently does not, because he's going to jump for joy. So hopefully everybody is doing well as we are ending the uh, first quarter. Oh, really? Come on now. We're ending the first quarter of the year. This is the 30th of March, and we are moving to April very soon. Which is weird to think about, because... For college students, we end, like, our finals week is, like, the first week of May, so there's, like, a month left, basically, and then I'm done with this semester. Unfortunately, not for you, well, sort of for you guys, mostly for me, I got the joyful bad news today that they're making some changes to the education department, and that's going to cost me another semester's worth of university work. Basically, in order to get into your methods classes, which I was supposed to start this fall, you have to have a certain GPA. And they recently changed that because you had to have a GPA overall that was 2.75 or higher, uh, as well as for your content area, had to be 2.75 or higher. And that was for education. And I found out uh, a couple hours ago, whenever I checked my email from getting back from work, that they changed that requirement from 2.75 to 3.25. So basically, I'm going to be spending next semester taking a bunch of courses from. That would have been 20, it would have been the fall semester of 2015 when I tanked? Yeah, that would have been it. And believe me, there was a good reason for tanking. That was the first time my mom had gone to hospital and had to make a very difficult decision. And so, as you can expect, I did not put much effort into my classes because while classes and not wasting money is important, I would say my mom's a little bit higher up on that list because you can't replace human life. You can retake college class, but it still sucks. The only upside to this is that they're super easy classes because they're like, you know, sophomore level or uh, maybe junior level, but still, I've taken them once before. Apparently, as much as I, I'm going to go ahead and vent for like the next maybe two minutes, it's this semester has been the semester of why are we doing this step? Because right now I have got to take what uh, is called the education department. And the educations are the only ones that have to take this. It's a test called the Thea, and it is basically a test that's cut it in the process. It's similar to taking a GED. It's basically do you know your high school content, yes or no? And the thing about taking the Fiat is you take it after a class in college called the Uni, which is your university skills. So you're taking a class to prove that you've passed your college content. And after you've proved that you've passed your college grade content, you have to go and take a test that's proved you've passed your high school content. 
Which seems a bit out of order, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a bit stupid. Kind of like with this and raising the GPA in my case, because I'm also studying for a test that I'm going to be taking this summer before I redo these classes in the fall, because most of them are offered in the fall. Where basically, I will be certified to teach math. I will have the content exam done, which is all subjects. We're talking like algebra, geometry, calculus, number theory, everything. I will have taken that test, passed it, and be certified to be a math teacher, but I'm going to have to go back and take, like, sophomore level trig, and I don't even remember what the other two are. So it's just like, you clearly know what you're doing, but you're gonna have to redo this again. You, you would think it would be, like, just being able to basically say, if you can pass the highest level of something, then you clearly already know it. But no, that would be too easy. That's why we try to clip out of subjects before we go into college, is because it's like, for your basic courses, oh, you clearly know what you're doing, you don't need this basic level history course, you already remember everything. So, it's a bit of a mess. But venting aside, let's get back to the game. It's 7-0, bottom of the second, Magikoopa's just decided to not do anything, apparently. Well, he finally swung, and he missed it by a mile, so... I'm so proud of him. Every time I see Magic Koopa, it just reminds me of, of all things, the, uh... The quest you have to do in Mario Party Advance with Magic Koopa, like the... The, like, the ultimate gamer or whatever he's supposed to be in that one, where you have to challenge him to a game and beat him. I think before you do that, though, you have to do, like, a hammer toss mini game, and it, like... You beat the hammer bro and get a gift for that, and then after a gift, not a gif, a G-I-F-T, and after you get that one, then it unlocks where that area is, or like lets you go there? Or he tell he might tell you where the guy is, that might be it. But it might also be one of those things that if you already knew it whenever you're starting the game, you may just be able to go there immediately, kind of like the secret basement in the Mushroom Hotel. It could be like that. I might actually do Mario Party Advance next. I know a lot of people really hate on that game, but if you take out the Mario Party thing and just kind of look at it as it like a little story Mario Party game, like a little spin-off game, it's actually not that bad. It's got some pretty good mini-games in it. It's just everyone sees Mario Party on that, they're like, this isn't traditional Mario Party. At least with Mario Party 9 and 10, there's no excuse. And technically you could say, well, it's not Hudson making it anymore, and that's true, but... They should have just stuck to the formula. They tried it for 9, I appreciate them for trying something new. It didn't work, they should have learned their lesson, and they didn't learn their lesson. And then they did it again anyway with 10, so... And I'll be honest, I haven't played Star Rush. I've heard, like, very mixed things about it. Like, there's some good parts, some bad, so... Maybe if I find, like, a super cheap copy, then I'll get it, but who knows. My tax return has been done since Monday, so I got a little bit of money back. Maybe I'll splurge on like a few games or something. Who knows? Alright, Wario. Mix proud. That would be a bad idea. Forgot Waluigi had laser throw. He's like, most of the characters have laser throw are power characters, and Waluigi's obviously not a power character. He's very much a technique character. Keep running. You'll make it. And that would be 11 to nothing, with a runner on third. A very nice triple indeed. Shame it's the third inning, so it really doesn't matter anymore. I would, honestly, I think Star Rank might be the hardest to get Mercy Rule in, because Special's got five innings, so yeah, it's more difficult, but you have more chances. You get four innings instead of two. Because if you get 10 up in the last inning, it's not a mercy rule. The game would have ended there normally anyway, so... I found that hard to believe that was an out, but whatever. It probably goes without saying, but thankfully for those of you that remember this is post-commentated, but also thankfully it is the last video that's post-commentated. I have not recorded anything else yet, though. I'm planning on seeing how classes roll homework-wise uh, Friday. Because Friday is the Almighty Scholars Colloquium where a bunch of people are doing presentations, and since mine got cancelled because not enough people were on board for it, even though it was actually a really cool presentation, uh, 
that means that I didn't have to worry about doing it, and it's optional. I have to go there for a class, but aside from that one class, the rest of the day is, for lack of a better word, free. At the very least, there's no homework due for Friday, so I've got today to at least fix things with other junk, for lack of a better word. You know, things, junk, stuff. Hopefully my, <laughs> my English minor's paying off here. I know what I'm doing, I swear. Alright, Waluigi, makes you proud. Right over the fence, right over that right fence. Well, you, you, well, I was gonna say you were close, but let's be real, you weren't. And my little boo buddy, get the player out. I mean, if there's anybody you gotta recruit, it has to be boo, right? That just goes without saying. That is the game. That is the character, and that is likely our pitcher, or at the very least, our backup pitcher. Bowser Monsters take it, 13-0. Beautiful. If only that 6 had been in the first inning, but then again... Well, no, I was gonna say, then again, we wouldn't have recruited Boo, but yeah, we would have. Mercy Roll would have gotten everybody. So let's take him on again. You know, now that I think about it even more, the Power Bat might- I might start using that in later episodes, because I might just try to go for Mercy Roll, because Mercy Roll would get this done faster. And I don't mean that in sense of, like, I want to get this LP done and get this faster, it's just the sense of, you know, instead of playing a team, like, five, six times, you play them once. Or twice if you can't get the Mercy Roll. But, really, in, a, in some sense, it does come down to luck when the game decides, hey, you're gonna get an option to get a Scout Flag or not, because sometimes it just does not show up. We've had multiple times where there's been like a huge lull where nothing's been happening. So we Bowser to catcher position because Bowser is a terrible fielder. Or did I put. No, I, I probably stuck him on first, actually. If uh, you're not going to have Bowser pitching, my recommendation is put him on first base if you're going to keep the overall team pretty much the same, like this one here, because he's got chemistry with all the players. If you're gonna like mix and match your team a lot, and he's not gonna have chemistry with a lot of players, then make him the catcher. Because he's a bad fielder, so... You really don't want him in any position other than that. You could put him on second or third, but ideally you'd want him on first, because ideally you're throwing to first more often than you are second, third, or home, hopefully. Gotta love that curve on the boomerang ball, because that would've been an out for sure. If that had just been, like, straight, that pretty much would've gone right at him, and there's no way he wouldn't have caught it, or not caught it. You just gonna spam that ball? No, he's actually gonna throw it proper, wow. Okay, good, that didn't count as an out. Alright, Bowser, make us proud, hit it right over the fence. Uh, not quite. Such a happy little Koopa. It'll be interesting to see how Mario Odyssey does. I don't think they're... I, I have to agree with a few people I've heard from on this one. I don't know if it's gonna get... Because they haven't put out like a demo or anything for it. I'm not so sure they're gonna hit their first release date here. I already saw what happened with Breath of the Wild, and granted the game was great, but when was it supposed to come out? Like... Was it, like, 2015? It might have even been, like, Christmas of 14, I don't know. It took a while, the game paid off, but good god. Pretty bad. I'm sure people are tired about hearing about that game, though, because, like, with the new console, right now, that's, like, the big go-to game. The Snipperclips game is really good, but still. I mean, like, if you want my honest advice, if you want the Switch, you could wait for the price to go down, but if you're getting it right now, you're probably getting it for Zelda and not for anything else. I did get the opportunity to play Bomberman R, <coughs> and I've heard the game is going to get some patches, which I think it already has gotten at least one, which is good, because from what I played, as soon as I take a drink and get rid of whatever's in my throat, from what I played... The controls, and granted they're wireless controls, I know, but I'm talking about, like, even for wireless controls, it's been a problem. The reaction time of you pressing a directional up, down, left, right, compared to your character actually moving that direction, 
is enough of a delay in a game like Bomberman that it will mess you up. And I'm already bad at Bomberman, that does not improve my chances anymore. So, can't say I'm a big fan of Bomberman R in particular. If that gets fixed, it would be great. But until then, no, wouldn't recommend it. 1 2 Switch is kind of weird. That's very much like. I had already said before playing it, it was, seemed like it was a game you'd bring to like a party if you were. Like just having like a drinking party with friends or something silly. I'd, I'd still hold by that. For that, it's a great thing, but if you're just gonna like play it with a friend just kind of casually, you, you're not gonna get much out of it, to be perfectly honest. So if you really want Breath of the Wild and you really want it on the Switch and not the Wii, you're probably getting that. And hopefully Breath of the Wild will tide you over until Splatoon comes out. And hopefully Splatoon, or sorry, Mario Kart 8. And Mario Kart 8 will hopefully tide you over until Splatoon comes out. Because right now, I've gone through a pretty good portion of Breath of the Wild. I've gotten all the shrines, done all the side quests, done the 76 out of 76. Um... Uh, I'm pretty close to getting all of my, the, my clothing done. I've still got to max out Flame Breaker and a couple like the earrings and tiara accessories. But aside from that, I've got everything else. And then after that, I'll probably... I don't know if I'll do all the Korok seeds, let's be honest. That's... The reward's not even worth it, and there's 900 of the dang things, I don't know. After that, I'll probably go to my other file where I'm just trying to sneak into the castle with three hearts because, you know, I'm an idiot. It seems like, more, from what I remember from actually going through the castle in my main file, it seems it's going to be harder to get into the castle rather than actually navigating through it. But I'll, I'll let you know how that goes. I'm sure it probably won't go that well, but we'll see. But yeah, unless you really want to play Breath of the Wild and you really want to play on the Switch and not the Wii U, then wait. will slide backwards. If it's still a bullet bell when they catch it, then it will slide them back even farther. It's one of the few actual things where getting an out's not terrible for them on characters, because if they line drive it to left, right, or center field, like the actual outfield, and it's still a bullet bell, it will push them really far back, and if there's anybody else on a base, they will probably have enough time to at least get back to the base and maybe run for the base again. So it's weird that it's uh, almost a defensive thing rather than offensive, but it seems like it is. As for Bowser's, don't even bother with it. <laughs> I feel like him trying to hit a home run every single time is a very viable strategy. One of the few characters it is. That was not safe. He should have been out. Like, for sure, he should have been out. But to be honest, I might have just... If I was them, I might have just thrown... For me, because I had two outs, I would have just thrown it in Bowser and tried to tag him out of third. That, on the other hand, will definitely be an out. But hopefully everybody will be doing well in the month of April. It's already started to rain here, which is super weird. I walked out this morning and there was ice everywhere. Like, almost, like, snow ice. It was very strange. We don't get snow until May here because, you know, my town is very weird. But no, like, we've gotten snow the first week of May for like the last three years in a row, so it's officially qualifying as tradition now. But yeah, we usually don't get much rain in March. It's usually like mid-late April for us, so this was a little bit of an early surprise, I guess. I mean, it was nice, just very unexpected. It just kind of stormed for a little while, and then it let up for a few hours, and then it started doing it again. Birds were happy. The birds were everywhere. Those freaking birds, they were ready for the worms to come out. It's hilarious. They have no fear of anybody while they're busy looking for food. Wake up, Chompy. Speaking of looking for food, you should be attacking the uh, left and right fields here. That was me trying to keep him away from swinging. But of course he tried for it. Of course he failed, because Boo is superior to Magic Koopa, like pretty much every Mario character. And the Bowser team once again triumphs over Wario. And we pick up two more characters to boot. King Boo, Pity Piranha, 
So for that team, that just leaves us Magic Koopa. Keep in mind also, something kind of important, since the captains don't get recruited, um, you will never get the white flag. It will never be where the team surrenders, like where if you were playing as, say, Wario and you beat Mario and recruit him, then you can't go fight Mario's team again. You can fight the teams over and over and over if you want. You'll get characters recruited off of them, and so, for example, for Wario's team, it's going to be him, Waluigi, and a bunch of Magic Koopas, and for Mario, it's going to be Piantas, Nokis, and Luigi, and you won't have Monty Mole, but the Piantas and Nokis are going to get replaced, because some characters can be. So, it's a little strange that you can fight them over and over, but you can, in fact, do that if you want. But because of that, that also means that none of the characters are... Well, I mean, you could probably expect it. Bowser Jr. is not going to be on the map, and so they kind of accounted for that, because no character would go to Bowser Jr.'s team by, uh, team by default, since usually that happens whenever the captain is recruited, but maybe not all the players on his team are. Since the captain never gets recruited, the players are never going to outright uh, leave his team for Bowser Jr. because he's not there. They'll leave his team for you. That would be kind of cool to have to beat up Baby Bowser, though. I mean, no one likes him, really. Definitely one of the more despised characters of the Mario universe. Both before and after Mario Sunshine, mind you. Good old Mario Sunshine. I really do hope they do a second Mario Sunshine, but who knows. A second one, not a... I mean, they could do a remake, too, but... Maybe if they did a remake, the controls would actually work proper. That would be good. I guess that's hoping for too much, isn't it? Yeah. That's almost part of the the charm. I don't know if charm is the right word. There. It's almost part of the charm of Mario Sunshine. Is that the controls don't work a lot of the time like they're supposed to. Well, good job, guys. Second place was 40 points behind me. The shy guys are dead. The piranhas are happy, and we will be taking their money. Very nice. Just stomping around. I, mean, I guess I picked up probably the power bat here, if I had to guess. Oh, red, I didn't pick up Bowser's. Bowser Jr.'s. No, it was regular Bowser. So there we go. After picking up every single item in the game, you have to have bought all the special items, including Bowser and Bowser Jr.'s. Then, uh, and you have to have purchased all the other items, the nice bat, the power bat, the lucky glove, all those at least one time to get them on there, you will be able to buy the superstar item. I did not pick it up there because I didn't have the money. But the superstar item will enable you to get all of the, I believe it's all the improvements from like the basic things. If like you get the nice bat, the power bat, I'll have to check that in the next video and I'll let you know. But I believe it's like all of those upgrades. You get the ability to hit better, catch better, run faster, uh, pitch easier. Uh, hit farther and hit more accurately if I remember correctly, but I'll check that in the next episode because for now We are done with this one. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Pit Martha with Mario Superstar Baseball I will see you next time for actual live commentary in the next one later